I'm Mel Collins, and this is The Greatest Day Interview. You are from L.A. originally. I am. I'm actually from a very small town called Hacienda Heights, uh, and my parents are still there. But uh, I grew up there, and uh, I would travel to L.A. at least once a week because um, just up front, I'm a PK kid, so <laughs> my dad was a minister and then a pastor, but that was in Los Angeles, so I would go down to South Central Los Angeles at least once a week. So I'd learn how to sing like that. And then I'd go back to Hacienda Heights where I went to school and you know, learn how to sing like this. So there you go. And um, is that you kind of have like two different voices? Cause yeah. You, you really can sing kind of the gamut. Oh, uh, sometimes, but <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's really why. It was from having um, kind of a dual life actually, you know, yeah. What kind of music is your favorite music to sing? Uh, undoubtedly, I love jazz standards. I, I am an old soul when it comes to my music. I'm very childlike in my uh, behavior with my friends and, and my outlook on life and personally. But when it comes to my music, I mean, don't bring me anything that's not at least got some dust on it. I just, <laughs> I just want to hear anything written by Rodgers and Hart. I want to hear anything sung by Ella Fitzgerald or Dinah Washington or Nancy Wilson or not even sung. I just, I want to hear Cannonball Adderley. I want to hear Art Tatum. Like that's all, there's lots more too. There's lots of rock I can tell you, but even all of that is like old, you know, Steely Dan. It's considered a little, you know, a little bit of archaic, but it's great music. Do you, know? you like to take Contemporary songs, jazz spin on them, or are you yeah. strictly like? Oh no, <laughs> that's really how this all started because I would hear it that way sometimes, and I think my first, the first thing I ever did like that was um, John Legend's "Ordinary People." When I first heard it, it was basically simple. It was just him and a piano, and I heard it, and I was like, "That's a modern day standard." It tells a story. It, it's poignant, you know. It has a little bit of angst in it. It's the chords are beautiful, you know. You hear the elements of jazz in it. And I, t I took that and I was like, okay, we're going to fully go all the way. And made it with like a little big band tune. And uh, that was the first time I tried it. And now I just recently, actually here in the studio, worked on uh, Sinead O'Connor's By Way of Prince, Nothing Compares to You. And we did a big band arrangement of that. Swing big band arrangement. Can I hear a little? Right now? <laughs> you want me to sing it? <laughs> okay, well, you have to pretend you hear all the drums and the horns and all that. Sure. but. Uh, it's been seven hours and 15 days, but da da since you took your love away. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are such a great actress. I know that also. Um, do you approach songs from a musical background or from an acting background also? Oh, or do you meld the two? Absolutely. Which is, funny enough, well, first of all, gonna be difficult with the compliments thank you but I, I do not take them well so this is a great exercise for me um, the I used to do that first just acting I didn't really sing because where I come from I'm fourth alto from the left like there are voices at the church choir that you will the world will never hear that are amazing so I didn't even start really singing solos or by myself until I was in really until I was in college a couple times in high school plays and stuff like that. But really it was in college where I started going the route of singing because I loved acting. I loved it. And so I fell in love with musical theater for that reason. It was, I could combine my two loves. So, and that's really why I love jazz standards because they tell such great stories. I'm going to go back, listen to the lyrics of bewitched, bothered and bewildered. And you will just be, I mean, the love and lust in that st the storytelling in that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's I, I always try to approach it from that. I I draw from my musical theater background and infuse that with jazz elements whenever I deliver a song. That's my goal. Well, I think you're achieving it. I hope. <laughs> um, you perform live a lot. Mm -hmm. You perform live in your day job. Yes. And in your uh, yeah. singing career, which is also a money making job yes. for you. Which yes. Is, that's kind of great. <laughs> How do you feel about doing what you love all the time? Uh. I wouldn't have it any other way. I actually prefer to sing live. I am someone who struggles in the studio. I, it's difficult for me to hear your imperfections back to you. You know, you're recording it and you have to listen to it and you got to, and the sound of your voice and, and all of that. Uh, I don't particularly care for the sound of my voice. 
But <laughs> I'm glad other people do so I can actually pay my bills. But uh, I, I enjoy singing live and I love the music and it's that moment where I get to um, kind of step out of the of the the humdrum or the ev- the grind of every day. You kind of step out of that when you get to sing live and you get to perform. You're still you, but you're in a whole new venue in a whole so you can allow yourself to be in a different headspace. And it's very therapeutic and it's fun. <laughs> you know, it's really fun. You yeah. also work at Disney. I do. Can you talk about singing there? Oh yes. yes. I've been singing there for a very long time. Uh, let's see. Am I going to be honest about how old I am? So <laughs> feel free to edit this. Uh, I first started singing there in 1998. That was the first. I did a show called An Amazement. And they mixed all the shows together, like uh, Hercules and uh, Little Mermaid and Lion King. And it was kind of like, um, uh, I don't know, what would you call that? A uh, fugue a little bit? One after the other, kind of folding into each other. Uh, we, and that was my first experience working at Disney and I really enjoyed it and I continued to work on cruise ships and then I came back to the park, worked in an acapella group called Groove 66, uh, did that for about three years and made some lifelong friends in that. Um, actually, uh, my godchildren are from someone in that group. So, uh, and now I work at, um, Five and Dime. There's been several shows in between there, but Let's skip to the end. Right. Uh, but I'm in Five and Dime, which is a show on. It takes place like uh, between the era of like 1930s, 40s, uh, early 40s, late uh, 20s to 30s, uh, with five jazz musicians and a singer, a vocalist, and uh, that's been really fun because you have a trumpet, you have a sax, you have a drummer, upright bass. Uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, and guitarist. <laughs> and then, you know, me. I've, I've been listening to your jazz album. Oh. Uh, and can you tell me about, uh, a little bit about that? Yes. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. That was, it was incredible to make. As much as I uh, don't care for the studio recording process, when it's finished and you have something that is forever in your hands of what you know, you want to deliver or give to the world. Like that is, I honestly feel like everyone should do it. You should make an album. Do you sing it all? Who cares if you don't sing? Like make an album. I honestly believe that because you have something that is so final that is, allows you to um, wrap something up and and give it and, and just let it go, release it. And it's it's a surreal experience. It was several, several days. It took us about six months. Um, we had several musicians cause we had big band and small group. Um, we, my, actually the, I made that album with Dwayne Benjamin who often music directs my shows. And though, so he's doing his own instrumentalist album, uh, coming up very soon. And so I'm doing three songs on that, but it's really, it's mostly instrumentals and it's his album that's coming up soon. But we made my first album together about four or five years ago. It was about, gosh, it goes so fast. <laughs> And had a CD release party for it, and to have everyone who knows you in one room supporting your art and the music you've made is like incredible. Everyone should experience that. So, a couple things: um, you have to drink a lot of water, which is a drag, but you do. Uh, and then I occasionally steam. I don't steam as often because here's the thing that they don't tell you a lot about with with singers. Every voice is different and there's no one thing that's gonna work for everybody, right? So I can't steam a lot because I have mold allergies and a lot of the steam things have tiny little bits of mold which don't affect most people but affect me. And I found that out the hard way, breathing into (laughs) an apparatus. But um, I steam a little bit, Uh, I warm up in the mornings. I use, I have to see a vocal coach, Carol Tingle. I recommend her, she's amazing, she's in Santa Monica. And uh, I study with her. And then I use her, I was going to say tape, you know how old I am, but I play it back on my phone and warm up before I sing every day with that. Those are my number one steady things. And then you maybe suck on a zinc lozenge every now and then. <laughs> uh, if you could only sing one song for the rest of your life. Oh my God, don't do it. Don't yeah. ask me that, Nicole. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, one song for the rest of my life? 
You could sing any version of oh it. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's probably I can't give you anything but love. Oh, was that it? So um... Because it can you can make that a ballad. It can be heartbreaking. You can, of course, do the way everyone's familiar with, you know, the upswing. Um, you can play all around it. You can scat on it. You can make fun voices on it. You can, it talks, it's what I think, as corny as it is, truly what matters in life and what makes the world go around, which is not stuff, but love. Now, I don't know that everyone knows that song, so. Well, they do now. <laughs> I'm going I'm to ask you Oh, come it. on. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I have plenty of, baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, you're sure to find happiness. And I guess, pretty, pretty, oh gee, I hope you're looking swell, baby. Diamond bracelets, Woolworths doesn't sell. No, 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 baby, till that lucky day. You know, darn well, baby. Can't give you anything but la 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 la. I stole that last part from Ella. <laughs> what is uh, the one style of music that your fans would be shocked that you love? <laughs> um, I don't know if there's one. Uh, hard rock. <laughs> I mean, but I shouldn't say hard rock. Classic rock. I love classic rock. I love just screaming the car to that. Um, I love 80s music. I mean, new wave. I love it. I love the Cocteau Twins. I don't know if any of you guys remember. Yeah, just, yeah, it's, let's just say it's alternative. <laughs> they might be surprised that I love that. <laughs> um, and how do you think that you could enact change with your music. Oh, I think this is so important. Um, well, actually, I actually I was fortunate enough to be involved in doing the backgrounds on this new album for Dwayne Benjamin that's coming out. The reason why I keep saying that because he doesn't have a title yet, but he has a song called "Come On, Mr. Moeller," and it's just it's just it's his idea of what he thinks is going on right now between the Mueller case and and uh, the political arena and. Uh, it is his hope that, and it actually was mine too when I was listening to it and coming up with the backgrounds for it, to just get to the truth of things. I think if you can get to the truth of things, that's such a unifying force. You know, it cuts away all the BS. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the real world you word. Can say so whatever you want. Cuts away all the bullshit, man. Just get to the truth. And I feel like music does that. Music takes cuts right to the truth. You can tell when someone's BSing or not. And, um, I, I, that's how I think you enact change with it. I think by being authentic, I think by not shying away from the things that move you and touch you. I think some of the best songs ever written were based on that, you know? Um, not being afraid of what people are going to think about it. And your song might been, be written about one thing, but someone will take that and use that to change the world, you know? So, um, yeah, Eric Clapton's Change the World is a good example of that. So, there you go. <laughs> um, and I think last, who inspired you? Unless I've already asked you that. I don't oh, you haven't. Who There's inspires you? several. Oh, gosh, I have so, several influences. Um, as far as singers, I love, everyone says Ella Fitzgerald, like, of course. So now, there's the Ella. And then, um, I love Nancy Wilson. I love um, Jane Monheit. She's more current and I adore the way she sings, adore the way she phrases. Uh, as far as I love Esperanza Spalding, I love, um, I'm trying to think who else do I love? I like Michael Buble. I, there's lots. I love Shaka Khan. She inspires me. I, even though that's not the type of music, I, I love her openness of how she sings. Um, I like Dave Matthews Band. I like music, y'all. <laughs> I just, I'm inspired by music. That's really the truth. All of it. All of it. I love it all. All right. Thank you so much. Thank this has you. It's been such a pleasure. It's been so great. Now we've talked about me. Now let's talk about you. <laughs> 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 Bye, everybody. Bye.